Welcome to the age of new realities, virtual and augmented. The world is advancing faster than it has ever before, and it is hard to keep up with the day-to-day -day technological advancement. So at any given time, there is a plethora of new technologies to keep your eye on, especially if you are an investor. It's the investor's job to know the next big thing, and one of the things that the investors are heavily investing is in virtual and augmented reality. We are surely spending most of our time looking at screens, be it a laptop, TV, or a cell phone. They have become a big part of our lives, and VR and AR are the two technologies that are changing the way we use screens, creating new and exciting experiences, both in a different way. The market for AI and VR products in 2018 is expected to be $17.8 billion, but by 2022, it is expected to go as high as $250 billion. Now, that's a lot of dollars to think about, especially when we are just four years away from 2022. Now, AR and VR both are two different things, and each has its strengths and weaknesses. So let's start with VR. Emerging yourself into a totally different world, that is the virtual world, is the whole concept of the VR technology. The use of computer technology to create simulated environment of which we become a part and can live that experience. The Sensorama was a machine that is one of the earliest known examples of immersive multi-sensory technology, which could be considered as some sort of virtual reality thing. It had screens, you could have smells, you can experience the wind blowing through your hair, and much more. Now, Ivan Edward Sutherland is an American computer scientist and internet pioneer, widely regarded as the father of computer graphics. Now, the Sword of Damocles is widely considered to be the first virtual reality head-mounted display, which is the HMD system. It was created in 1968 by Ivan Sutherland with the help of his student, Bob Sproul before he began working towards what he termed the ultimate display. Now, virtual reality uses head technology, where we move our head to look around what's happening. Although VR made a lot of promises back in the late 80s and 90s, it did not evolve much apart from gaming and arcades. Sega introduced the concept of VR headsets in the market, but it was actually Nintendo which released the infamous Virtual Boy. Now, when I say infamous, I'll explain why it was such a huge disaster. The display was only 244 pixels wide and there was only a single color used, that is red. Moreover, it was uncomfortable and expensive for an average gamer to buy that headset. There was a lot of hype in the 90s, but the technology wasn't right and ready to deliver that hype. Today, we have the right technology where we can create high definition 3D content and create immersive experiences that are very close to real life. Although mostly used for gaming, it was supposed to give us an experience of travel without traveling and experience entirely new worlds. It is now being used in research and therapy too. It is also used for people having acrophobia, which is the phobia of height. How is your anxiety now? I still feel okay. Quite high up to be this close to the edge with very little barrier. But okay. Nowadays, VR content is useful for PTSD and cognitive therapy patients. Surgeons are using VR to practice highly technical surgeries before operating, and businesses are using them to give a virtual tour. Now, talking about the types of VR tech available right now, we have wired and wireless. Now, wired are the ones which are connected to a good processor and usually work a lot faster and smoother. But the thing about the wired VR headset is that, first of all, they're expensive, and secondly, the movement is limited as the headset is connected to a system or a processor which is doing the heavy computing. Now, when it comes to wireless, we use the mobile phones and dock them into the VR headset. Although the mobile screens do not provide a very high definition and the fast processing content, as the screen size is small, it provides you with the ability to move. As it is wireless, you can carry it anywhere and it does not weigh much. So the famous example of the VR headset is the Oculus Rift. We have HTC Vive and we also have the PSVR. In the wireless category, we have Samsung Gear VR and the Google Daydream View. On one hand, where VR takes you to a whole other world, AR adds things to the existing world. The word augment is derived from the Latin word augur, which means to add or increase. It does not cut out the real world, but rather it's an enhancement of the real world where we mix the real world with virtual objects and that creates beauty. That's why it is sometimes referred to as mixed reality. Now, when a person's real environment is supplemented 
or augmented with the computer generated virtual images it is known as augmented reality magic leap was one of the first company to introduce ai to the world it secured around 15 million dollar investment in 2014 and released the most famous magic leap one recently google invested 2.3 billion dollars to this company you can think of it as the oculus rift of ai technology they have been making great advancement in content usage and the high definition wide angle view there is also the concept of smart lenses it is similar to a lens but helps in creating ar content and that too without using any external devices but just your eye with ar you can interact with stuff right in front of you as if it was an object in the room you kind of manipulate it and it completely creates a new environment around you you might have heard about the widely famous pokemon go i know you have now more than 380 million users were playing it at one single point that is one out of every 20 people on the earth now if you've used snapchat then you are already using ar their various face filters are all ar based what snapchat does is that it presents a layer of reality over the reality in which we are already in now ar users can interact with the virtual content in the real world and can distinguish between the two if we look at the usage of the ai technology apart from gaming if implemented right business can use it correctly to walk customers through the repairs more efficiently the best suited example for this one is the volkswagen mata it is an app which provides the real-time augmented reality implementation of how to repair your car other examples include the google translate then again we have the google glass and we have the most famous hololens by microsoft now it was microsoft who first coined the term mixed reality now talking about the different types of realities ar and vr they are two different things and each has its own strength and weaknesses in the long run ar is going to be the winner now that's what i think because the future is more tilted towards ar because if you look at what's happened with our cell phones over the last 10 years they have become more and more an extension for ourselves into the lives and the world we've been augmenting reality with our phone this whole time it is sort of an extension to what we are already doing with our cell phones it allows you to interact with the real world and still add virtual things to the environment if you look at the different vr gears only a few people have it so its widespread adoption rate is much lower as compared to the air technology where the only thing you need is a smartphone or a tablet now this doesn't mean that vr does not have its place there can be many wonderful application of virtual reality not just in gaming but also in therapy there are even studies where people with paralyzed limbs and people in shock have learned to walk again which help them to visualize their feet stepping one in front of the other it helps them to recreate it in the real life now one thing i do want to say here is that in the future there might be a scenario where we have vr and ar in the same device and you can switch between the two seamlessly one moment you are working in your office and doing other work when suddenly you feel tired and want to switch to vr and have a smooth and relaxing experience i believe that the gap between these two are going to end very soon and that too in the side of air but who knows if we might develop some dope technology where we have such high definition graphics that it looks almost like reality and vr then takes on air who knows let us know in the comments below what you think is the future I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!